Hello and welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkil Wiersma and I'm an orchid grower from the Netherlands. Welcome to the Scareca Lab. This time we are going to talk about the Irene Dumpkin. And uh, we have, well for me it's a little bit of a sad story, but before I will go uh, into it, uh, let's uh, have the other uh, participants uh, for this Scareca Lab uh, in frame now. So uh, you know which one uh, you can check as well. I found these character labs very helpful, especially when you have orchids you don't grow as well or you're just new to them. So uh, therefore, um, these, yeah, like I said, these character labs are very helpful. And I will have the uh, links to their channels uh, inside uh, my uh, description box under this video as well. So okay, yeah, let's uh, go to uh, my Irene Duncan. And here she is. As you can see on the tag, and yeah, I'm going to talk about why uh, mine is not looking so happy. Well, first of all, this is my second one. I had one a few years ago and it did well, but suddenly it didn't do so well. And it really did uh, die very quickly. So I decided uh, to buy another one because I was really looking forward to the blooms. I never have them uh, seen them uh, in real life, but on pictures and videos, and they are really, really beautiful, I think. So therefore I thought, well, I'm going to try to grow this one again. So I did get a fairly um, nice size uh, Irene Duncan uh, again. Uh, I believe it had even two more leaves on the, uh, down there. I'm not sure, but it, it was a little bit bigger. But then I did a uh, unpotting on it, on it because I want to grow this in cell watering, uh, as I do with uh, basically practically all my orchids. So I did get it out of the pot and I had one, I think about this side root and a very small one. They didn't seem so happy. So there wasn't uh, much to work with, but I uh, did uh, unpot it because the media was very bad. So I needed to and um, I, I, yeah, I really was hoping to work with those roots, but it didn't take long before those roots completely died off. So I ended up with a second Irene Duncan, and this time a, ro a rootless one. So I, I almost gave up hope, I did give up hope, but I thought, well, I, there's still some strength in the, and, and uh, feet in those leaves that were, were quite firm at that time. And I, I'm talking about four months ago, something like that. So I did put it in a net basket with nothing in it, no media at all. And I did spray it almost daily, um, depending on the weather. But I did spray it uh, every other day with RO water and some seaweed water. And just to see what would happen. And I was waiting for new roots to grow. And it did take about four months, or maybe even a bit longer. And then I finally saw it this wrinkling starting on the leaves and I thought well that might be a sign and I had a closer look and I had four new roots starting to grow inside of the pot and that's about one or two months ago so that's uh, not that long ago but yeah it may seem that this one is trying to recover but it's very very sad and it's really hanging in there but yeah you never know so I didn't check the pot until now so uh, I thought it would be nice to do this in this care lab and see if we can find any roots on s on the side of the pots I don't think so but you never know so let's uh, grab this one carefully don't move it too much because of those new roots and uh, yeah let's have a look inside of that pot we are now at my up potting table inside the orchid room with uh, the Irene Duncan and let's have a zoom in a little bit well I can see here a root there that does look a bit dark so I'm not sure but I think it's alive but like I said I'm not sure but yeah I definitely don't think we will see anything outside of the pot yet but let's have a uh, a look you never know that would be amazing but so far I only see the beautiful pumice media that I really like to use. And yeah, I don't think we have any, I'm sorry, any uh, new roots yet. So I had four new roots, like I said, but I think I can only see now three of them. But these two do look 
kind of healthy. Those are in the front and you can see they are really going into the media. And one is a little bit uh, lighter green color. So it's taking up some moisture already. I still spray this from time to time with the RO water and some uh, seaweed. And I also have some of that water left inside of the pot. So it's, it's very uh, humid in a pot. And hopefully thereby I encourage those roots uh, to grow further. So yeah, therefore it takes a lot of energy. You see now the uh, dehydration there, but this, whoops, don't move it too much, too roughly, but this leaf seems to have a sort of nice green color on it. So yeah, a care collab about this one. It's, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to survive. Um, in this case, I try to uh, really uh, help the help this orchid to grow again. Um, so yeah, therefore, I only can give you so far tips on how to uh, keep it alive. Uh, I think it's now over a year that I have it and it's still alive. So there's something, uh, yeah, I had it in uh, August 21. I did the first repot and then four months. Yeah, that's uh, and just recently I did uh, I normally I sh it should be the other way around, but I had uh, first the uh, repotting date here and then the last repotting date. But the uh, yeah, it's, it was in April this year that I put it in this uh, new setup. So yeah, I still give it only seaweed and all, all, all water. Just, just a teeny tiny bit of seaweed, not too much. But the seaweed uh, hormones really help them to uh, encourage new root growth. And so far it did work. But yeah, like I said, let's hope those roots will uh, continue to grow. And we're back in the greenhouse again. I put it uh, in her place where did we just uh, did first start this video. Have a look at it but uh yeah what i'd like to mention is that in this case i try to uh, avoid as much stress for these types of orchids that are really already uh in so much stress because of uh they don't have roots and they uh, need any everything they have to put out those roots every last reserves they will use to put out the roots so therefore i don't have it high in the sky where those orchids do get quite some uh, light but I have it fairly downwards um, just to give it enough light to be happy and to grow. But don't give it too much light, especially on orchids that don't have a root system, a healthy root system. Because you, give them, uh, you will give them so much stress and they probably will die because it's just too much to handle. Uh, you imagine if these war leaves get warm or very bright light on it. Yeah, that would be way too much. So I keep it uh, very, uh, I slow it down on, on, the, on the light, I should say. I do not fertilize it. It doesn't make sense because it doesn't have the root system to take the fertilizer and put it into the leaves. So therefore, also no fertilizing. Just keep it hydrated as, as best as you can. And like I said, seaweed, for me, it really, really, really works. Those hormones really stim stimulate the, the plant to grow um, roots and to exist, uh, extending those roots and, and try to get them in the pot. And as soon as I can see those roots inside the pot, I might add a little bit of fertilizer. And a little bit is about 30, maybe 40 parts per million to give it just an indication. Very, very easy on the fertilizer. I just keep that, that pot clean no salt bit built up or anything um, if i must i will flush it uh, but so far i don't need to because i uh, really do not use any type of fertilizer like i said so therefore i do not have salt built up or anything like that so yeah that's my uh, care uh, guidance for this our particular orchids because I, uh, I I'm trying to save it and therefore I uh, did still did join in for this in this care collab because I think it might be uh, helpful if you have a similar case with a orchid that doesn't has as much roots as this one for example and it does need a little bit more attention um, yeah biggest tip is don't give it too much light you can 
Yeah, I'd rather have it a little bit on the dark side than on too much light. I didn't make that mistake, especially with cat layers. You think, oh, they need light. And this one is a beautiful uh, um, cross between a vendor type and a Vendoliopsis. So lots of light, warm. No, take it uh, slowly. Don't make it too warm unless you cannot, uh, you live in a climate where it gets too warm. Keep it very uh, humid. That's very important. And I, uh, I will spray it if it's very warm. But these days, uh, last week, we didn't have a beautiful, uh, that much, uh, yeah, we did have a kind of nice weather, but not very warm or very beautiful in my case, because I do like the warmer weather. But anyhow, <laughs> so therefore I keep it, uh, then I keep it moist in the morning, of course. Uh, nice air movement around it and in the morning spray it so the water that gets in the crown or etc can uh, can evaporate in time before night sets in so yeah that's that's it for now for my uh, care uh, I can give so far in this Irene Duncan I hope the second time with the, with the uh, update uh, we can uh, have a look again and we will see some roots let's hope let's uh, yeah try uh, to give this uh, August some positive <laughs> energy and uh, hopefully we will see her back in the, in the second uh, in the update on this care collab. So for, uh, so far I would like to say thank you and of course if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below and I uh, just want to say uh, once again thank you for watching this video and I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I, I prefer of course a beautiful healthy orchid but we all have those that do not so well so. Next time I will have a better growing orchid for you guys. <laughs> so uh, once again, thank you for watching and hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.